Exodus 20, 2 through 3. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The land of Egypt is an empire. It's a land of idolatry, where idolatry is simply anything or any dogma that is rising itself above that first law of God. What does this mean then? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, we get this answer in Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. What he is saying here is that we are to love this God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. This is the all of the law. Oh, what does that mean? In scripture, God is the all good spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Mind. It is the all good that we are to crown our spirit, our passion, our mind with. The second commandment is like unto the first, that we shall love our neighbor as ourself. Well, what does that mean? It means that we should not do to others things we don't want unto ourselves. Matthew 7, 12, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even so unto them, for this is the law and the prophets. That first and great commandment, to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, means you are to make this unseen all good seen. And like unto it is the second, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, which we know is entirely about simply not doing to others things you don't want done to yourself or your kids or your pets or your property. On these two commandments hang all the law. Remember the question is, which is the great commandment? Jesus is saying, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And they would hang all the law and the prophets on a cross because he exemplified it. Because in Matthew 11:13 it's telling us for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, meaning unto John or even unto John the Baptist. That's Jesus the Christ who prophesies unto John the Baptist that we are to repent rising desires to do harm in this world before we give them life in the first place. That's what repentance is. We don't go out and do it and then repent. We want to repent before we do it, when we have the rising desires that we want to do these things, we cut them away and we find a different solution that doesn't bring the harm. Matthew 24, 2. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. You see, this is all about the first law of God. It's the one stone that all the other stones shall submit unto because this one way this one stone this one law if you don't break the first you won't break the rest all other laws are to serve this first law <clears throat> that's what it means here that when it says that there shall not be one stone left upon another that shall not be thrown down it's not that stones are literally being discarded or thrown down or that laws are being removed and thrown down it's just telling us that the first law of God supersedes. They shall all be thrown down in the sense that they serve the first law, that that first law holds all the importance, and that if you don't break the first, you won't have to go through a legal system to account for any other law broken. So if you've broken any of the other laws, you've actually broken that first law first. This is how all the other stones fall before this first law. Revelation 2.4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Well, your first love is this first way. Even though on one hand we are wanting to keep our own safety and peace, most people are, they have left their first love, the very one way that keeps that safety and peace. What does this mean? They are going the way of politics, religious politics. They are going the way of humans that are rising within Ephesus who are pulling people away from the first law of God to say that we are the saviors. We've got a problem here and this is how we're going to fix it. But the repair that they're going to make 
is not going to be the ultimate repair. And we see how Ephesus gets destroyed by earthquakes, quite literally. Well, what's happening to Ephesus spiritually is a quake. The foundation of truth is being rocked below the feet of these people and in their lives. They are being misled. This is what this revelation means. People don't just leave their first love of not doing things to others they wouldn't want done to themselves unless their minds are being controlled or at least pumped full. And this is the control part, that there is this enemy out there. You have to fear this, and this is how we're going to fix it. You need to trust us up here, or this is the problem with the economy, and these are the people to blame, and this is how you fix it. And you see what I'm saying? But they're not going to return to just this first law where the whole society is governed by people who are not going to pull this BS and by corporations or business being done with Ephesus that is going to be allowed to do this by the governance, just in our own country. How awful is it that not one of our leaders, paid leaders, put their hands on that Bible to protect this nation and constitution from enemies within and without, because all they're concerned about is blaming enemies without unless it's the other party, but it's really the enemy within. How dare they do this, put their hands on the Bible, say they love God, when that scripture is saying, we're not to vow upon anything. You make your yes, yes, and your no, no. It's about integrity of character under this first law. Yet they go through all this ritual and deny that very scripture in this great ritual of being sworn in as a, a leader in this country. And then they do the absolute opposite. These are revelations that are untaught. And we know that the system before us is entirely about truths become lies and lies become truth. And you do not want this. The truth that makes us free. You eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and of evil and you will surely die. Well, these people don't want to gain wisdom because eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is entirely about gaining the wisdom of that which is good and that which is not so that you know the difference you know how to build the good you know those who don't and you remove those that don't so that you can keep that safety and peace upon you you're governing your own life this way why aren't you demanding it of them well if you eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall surely die it's not about literally dying. You're going to die to the false doctrine and dogma you were raised with all of your life. Because this first law supersedes. Again, there's no women's oppression. I don't know why this is hate speech. There's no gay hate. There's no black hate. There's none of this in scripture. You're just anti the first law of God. All the rest of the antis are birthed of that one first one. If you're anti that first one, then you're the one who's going to go out and start being the racist or the, or the homophobe or the misogynist.